and welcome to another episode of All About Depth Base. Today we are going to be using mainly water texture and we are going to be creating my splash base. Now, I will warn you, this is probably the base out of all the ones that I've made that has taken the most patience. Um, it's got some very fiddly bits in it towards the end and it's very much a game of do a layer, let it dry for two days, do a layer, let it dry for two days. So it really is a labour of love. I would recommend that if you, you know, you're going to base um, a small army or anything with these, you can do them as a batch and it will make the process much quicker um, as long as you've got more than one of the little moulds um, that I use at the beginning. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a long process, but I think it's worth it. I think they come out really good. So hopefully you'll agree. Um, so let's head to the table and I will see you in a bit. So the first step is nice and quick for this one. And what we're going to do is just find and break off a small piece of cork bark. Now I've made sure it's relatively flat on one side that's going to be on the base. And then I've kind of pulled and trimmed this so that my miniature will fit nicely on there. So the guy I'm using has no feet. He's just got his cape. So I've made the, the rock so that his cape fits over it. And you're not really going to be able to see this once the base is finished and the water's all built up anyway. But that will give me a nice solid area to pin him to. So, all we're going to do is crack out the good old Vallejo white stone pumice and just put a thin layer on. Now, as you see, this isn't my normal base. Um, and the reason for this is because I want this base to be quite small because my mini is quite small. And if I did it on a bigger base, it'd look a little bit out of place. So this is just a spare base from Super Dungeon Explorer, I think that I just saved him. So we're just going to put this on. And this is really just to give it a little bit of texture at the bottom. And this is also what we're going to be applying our colour to. So just get all of that filled in. And then just place your rock in the middle and press it down. And then we're going to leave that to dry for about 12 hours and then I'll come back and show you what's next. The next step for this one, after priming it in Mechanica Standard Grey, is to choose the colour that you want to show through your splash effect. So, for example, for this one, I've gone for a dark purple. But for this one, I'm going to stick to kind of just making it look like nice blue water so i've gone for thousand suns blue which is a, a citadel base paint and it's kind of a, a really rich turquoisey color i really like it so just going to take an old brush um because as i've said before i don't like using good brushes on this rough texture and we're just going to apply a coat of this all around the rock just being as careful as you can not to get it on the rock itself. As you can see, I've thinned my paint quite a bit, so it goes on really nicely. And if it dries and you can still see the grey underneath, just give it another coat if you want to. Some With some colours you need to and with others you don't. And what I would recommend at this point as well is just painting round the rim in this colour as well. Because it's very tricky when you're adding the water texture to this base to not get that water texture on the rim as well. And the problem is once you've got water texture on the rim, it's it's kind of really obvious that it's there. So when you paint the rim afterwards, 
you you don't get a nice smooth consistent covering like you would do normally the water texture kind of gets in the way so what i do is i paint the rim the same color as the water and that way all i need to do is cover this with the water texture on purpose and it gives a nice finish to the to the rim of the base so yeah just leave that to dry and we'll move on to the next step now the paint's dry we're ready to apply a wash so to begin with we're just going to apply a light wash of agrax earthshade onto our rock Spread it around and make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies. There we go. And then just rinse your brush off. And on the bit that we've painted blue, we're going to use some Drakenoff Nightshade. And you can do these at the same time, it doesn't matter too much if they run into each other slightly. So, just put that around there. And if you can, let it spill over down the um, rim of the base as well, and you will see why in a couple of steps time. And then just leave that to dry for half an hour or so and then we'll come back and get some dry brushing done to bring out the details on this we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing and we're going to start with some lothern blue just to highlight where we've painted the um, thousand suns blue so i'm just going to put a little bit on my kitchen roll and work that into the bristles get rid of the excess and then just lightly drag that over the texture <clears throat> and it just increases the contrast between the textured bits and where the wash has settled so then get as much of it out of your brush as you can and then we're going to dry brush the rock so i'm going to start off with some dawnstone and again just putting that on your kitchen roll And working it into your bristles and then put this all over the rock and the dog's back wonderful to be fair he's probably barking because our cats are probably in the window teasing him they like to do that a lot so that's the dawn stone next is a quick dry brush of administratum grey a little bit lighter with this one you don't need to clean your brush in between these layers and just catch the edges with that and then finally some terminator stone i don't know why i always shake that it's a dry paint it doesn't need shaking force of habit so with this one we just want to be very light and just catch the very edges and the most raised parts
And there we go. Next, we want to start building up our water effect because as I explained earlier, this base takes a long time to make and it's adding lots and lots of layers over a number of days. You can't rush this one. But the first thing we want to do is just get a nice solid base, a nice thin layer of water texture. And to do that, I'm going to be using one of these silicone moulds from Green Stuff World. And this is a 25mm mould. Now, you don't have to use one of these. Um, you can just apply the water texture with a pipette like I have done in other videos um, if you want to. But I thought since I've recently got these, um, I would give it a try. So you're just going to pop your base inside. Um, and then take the Vallejo still water. And we're just going to start adding drops of it around the rock. And we're going to fill it until the water texture is about a quarter of the way up the rock, just so that it's completely covering the base. The other thing you can do as well is if you have it, instead of using Vallejo water texture, you can use uh, resin. Um, the main reason I use this instead of epoxy resin is because you only need a little bit. So it's a bit of a pain to have to, to mix it. And then I'm just going to go in and pop any bubbles that have formed, any, and just neaten that up. So I'm going to leave that for 24 hours and then we'll come back, we'll get it out of the mould and we'll start building up the splash effect. So I made a rookie error with uh, this one and I took it out of the mould a bit too soon and it had all of these bits missing around where the, the base is. However, with this particular base, it doesn't matter because we're going to be adding um water texture around the edge anyway i already added a little bit just to make sure that there was a coating on some of the bigger gaps um but this is what you end up with now you'll see that this doesn't dry like resin does because if you use epoxy resin in one of these molds you get a completely flat surface because the water texture shrinks you kind of get this almost the beginnings already of a wavy effect and it sinks in places and and I quite like that for this particular design. So all we're going to do now is take some Vallejo water texture, transparent water gel and an old brush and we are simply going to start adding to the edges and start building this up and out. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here and I'm just putting it on and kind of gently pulling the brush away to force the water texture into these kind of wave shapes. like this. It takes a little bit of practice to get the gel to do what you want but you don't have to be massively neat with this because this uh, is just the first of several layers that we're going to be doing. So it's just to get a base down that you can start building on over the next week or so. You can leave a few little gaps, you can make some bits higher and more wave-like than others. You can kind of just do whatever you like to start forming the wavy 
splash effect. And then we're going to leave that for at least 24 hours. The reason I say at least is because ideally you want what you've put down to go completely clear before you add any more. I learned this the hard way by um, applying this very, very thickly. Um, and it took, it literally took about a month to go clear. <laughs> so I've learned that the best way to do this is slow and steady and you get better results from it and quicker results as well. As strange as that sounds so leave this to dry and then i will come back and i will show you the results and show you how to do the next bit so two days later and we have a nice clear water effect so we're just going to do exactly the same thing again load your brush up with your water texture and start applying it to make these ridges higher now, like I said, this is just a rinse and repeat, so I'm not going to keep coming back and showing you. Um, I am going to build this up and show you the final result of this stage, and then we can move on to the next step. For the next step, once this is all dried, you're going to need some invisible thread. Now, that is literally what I search for on eBay. And this is what I got. It's literally what it says. It's practically invisible thread. And what I've done is I have cut tiny, tiny pieces of this. And I haven't done this on screen because I'm not going to lie to you. It is a faffarama and trying to cut tiny pieces of it and they ping off everywhere and then they get stuck to your fingers. And it would take like an hour for me to film that and get what I needed so I've just cut them here they're probably about five, between five and six mil long and what we're going to do is use an old paintbrush and get some of the water texture we've been using and just dab it onto the tips of the highest points in the splashes and then you're going to very carefully take your tweezers and get your piece of invisible thread and try and stick it on. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this where you can see if I do that. So you can see there that I've just attached that tiny piece to that little peak and I'm going to do about six of these all the way round and then I'm going to leave it to dry for a couple of hours and then we will come back and do the final step. I lied, sorry. There are actually two more steps, not just one. Um, so this is the penultimate step. So what we're now going to do is apply some of these teeny tiny beads to the ends of our pieces of invisible thread. Now, the best way to do this is by taking your old paintbrush and getting a tiny little bit of your water texture gel and just applying it to the tip of your little bit of thread. And then taking some tweezers. I'm not going to lie, this is faffy and fiddly and I will try my very best not to swear. Watch me get it right first time now. So all you're going to do is take this little bead and you're going to apply it to the end of each of your little bits of thread. Now, I just got these beads on eBay. Uh, technically, they are a little bit too big for this purpose, which is why there is another step after this. These, I believe, are 1.5 mil. One mil beads like this do exist, um, but I wasn't able to get any. So there we go. I'm going to put one of those on each of these little 
drops and then we will come back for the actual final step. This final step is just to try and blend these beads in slightly and make them look a little less like beads. So to do that we're simply going to take some more of our water texture gel on a paintbrush and just put a little bit on each bead and on your invisible thread. Just a tiny little bit, it doesn't need to be a lot and it's just, as I say, to make it a little bit less obvious that these are plastic beads. So I will finish this off and let it dry and come back and show you the finished result. Everything is completely dry now. So this is the finished item. Obviously there's a few little bits of the um, water texture here that are still a little bit cloudy. Uh, but over time they will dry completely clear. Uh, I also did one in a slightly different colour. So I've got a purpley one there. But since I started um, with this design, um, and I'm going to be honest with you, these have taken about a week, if not a little bit more, to um, completely finish because there's lots and lots of layers of water texture. I've been looking at it and I kind of decided that I'm actually, I'm not that keen on the way they look from the side with the colour showing at the bottom. Um, so what I have done since uh, starting this video is that I have made myself some clear bases out of uh, epoxy resin and these moulds from Green Stuff World. So I'm actually going to try and make some of these again but so that the whole thing is completely transparent. Um, and once I've done that, I will put them on my Facebook page and Instagram so you can uh, see the difference. So there you go. That's how you make a splash. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Um, and if you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And that way you'll be notified whenever I release new content. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and I've put the links to those down in the description. And feel free to leave me any feedback or comments, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And I will be back on Wednesday. So until then, happy hobby.